Welcome to those of you who are just joining. Um, we have Kelly Lake here with us today who's gonna share some great information. Um, but before we get started, I just wanted to draw everyone's attention to the poll on the right-hand side of your screen, just above the chat. Um, if you go in there and select yes on the poll, um, you will get any follow-up information today from Kelly. So if you want a copy of the slides or additional resources, make sure that you do go ahead and go in and select yes on that poll. Um, and without further ado, over to you, Kelly. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jenny. I appreciate it. Day two of the conference, very excited to be here today. Um, excited to bring to you some new insights uh, on workforce enablement and give you some a little bit more uh, from our experience and my experience personally, working with different clients across the board from a global perspective on the learning ecosystem and how it's evolved. So I'm sure that all of you um, have been uh, involved with some sort of aspect of the learning ecosystem. And I thought today would be a really great opportunity to give you just a little bit more insight, like behind the curtain a little bit from what's working well and what's not working well. So I'm Kelly Lake. I'm the global head uh, of learning for KnowledgeWorks Global Learning. We are a full service learning provider from end to end, not only from services, but also from a product perspective. I've been in the industry for quite a long time. Uh, I've been working with the Learning Guild for, for years. Uh, met some of you, worked with some of you that are actually uh, joined the session today, so welcome. I look forward to some of your feedback. Uh, please do, any questions that you have, just submit it like Jenny had indicated prior to that. Uh, but for today, the most important thing is being able to provide that little bit more of insight from what you've been gaining out in the industry from a strategic level. Um, from I look at organizations from the top down and bottom up. And we'll talk a little bit more. I'll give you some examples as we go through this. So you're a little bit more in the know of what's happening and what's moving forward and, and what we're going to approach. So just from a very high level, I don't wanna walk through just a little bit of a level set of where we are in the industry right now. Um, talk a little bit more about the different types of ecosystems because as we all know, our, our industry is constantly changing. And that's actually pretty exciting. At the same time, it's challenging as we all know. Uh, walk through a couple different ones with those, show you that from a learner perspective all the way from a technology and from an enterprise as well. And then also some of those nuances that are happening like workforce management and workforce engagement that you know a lot of you have been involved with for years or maybe you're new to the market, but it gives you an insight to say where we are, what's changing, um, what possibly can we gain a little bit more insight to so we become a little bit more educated to make some of those decisions. Uh, also, as we drill down to those workforce um, items, I don't want to call them trends too much, but they are trends, a little bit more insights on that, what works and a little bit of what you could take back with you on some ideas that maybe you're already, you know, talking about or you're working with internally with your organizations or some of your clients is, is the same thing. And then we're going to wrap up talking about that modern learning ecosystem and I call it evolving because it will continue to do so. So let's go ahead and start with this. So all of you, I'm, I'm sure, have plenty aware of what's going on as far as stats in our industry. We have a small industry, but it's ever changing. And I think that's very important. And why is that important? Because what does it mean to you specifically? So if we look at, you know, moving forward, um, what's changed that we are able to actually gleam as part of our strategy, because a lot of organizations are struggling with their strategy. How do we move forward? What's the right technology? You know, we're talking about improving skills across the board. Why? Why are we, you know, having to redesign roles? What does that look like for me personally? What does that look like for me as my role within my organization? And being able to come back and have a strategy that's going to work with you, that's going to grow with you. Um, we all need that blueprint. And, you know, prior, you know, I've worked with so many different organizations on that one year you know, blueprint, two year, three year. Now taking a step back and saying realistically, we need to look at this a little bit more frequently because it is changing, because we are evolving, because the way that we have done business is it's changed. And we're all moving closer to that. Uh, leaders in our industries are struggling because not knowing exactly what's the right thing for our organization and matching up goals, you know, against, you know, our learning initiatives, you know, tends to be a little bit further um, out a little bit more when we take a look at what we can achieve current state and what we can achieve moving forward. And then also closing those gaps are very important as well. And I, and I look at this as when I'm speaking to CLOs and different leaders within organizations of, you know, I hear we're not a, quite aware of 
the end result of us, you know, creating this engage and training down the road. How can we measure this? And, and I always say it's not only ROI, but it's ROP, return on performance, and how you're able to measure that and what success around that looks like. Because again, it is changing. And closing the gaps, not only on a skills, different skills for different roles, but closing the gap for awareness on our leaders so they can understand specifically what that translates to. Uh, because I've been doing this so long and because I've been an ID for years and working in technology, being able to translate that and bridging that gap between learning and technology, you know, things are going hand in hand. But when you talk to an organization and they're talking about how do I move this forward, you really have to start on the grassroots. And that's what we're going to walk through today a little bit more on what that strategy looks like. So for 2021 and moving beyond that, we have different types of insights on what's happening and we're seeing this more collaboration. You know, what are we talking about when it comes to enhanced user experience, um, adaptive learning? You know, we've been talking about a lot of these different terms for a long time, but what does that actually mean? So if we look at take a step back and say holistically, if I'm designing or you're designing your learning strategy for your organization and actually needing to implement that short term, long term, because again, success comes from how well you implement that. And we all know, you know, when it comes down to learning, sometimes that area isn't brought into later on into a major project that's happening. Or by the way, we have the best laid plans and there's an acquisition or there's a merger and that has to be taken in consideration and how you are actually able to be a little bit more flexible in your plan as you go, you move forward on that. So with this particular approach, you know, what does that look like for increased engagement across the board? Um, are your learners actually proving that their, you know, their competencies have been matched or are they proving that they're able to demonstrate efficiencies in core areas? Are they engaging from a collaborative perspective? Um, what does that look like as you're, you know, redesigning that across the board? You know, a lot of times we, we hear that, you know, we just laid off 35% of our workforce and now we're in the process of hiring individuals back in. But again, we're challenged because we're not quite sure how to hire them back in. And what does that virtual onboarding look like? How are we able to ensure that we're working with them in the very beginning? And oh, by the way, you know, we can't give them an ID because our LMS, you know, that doesn't work until two weeks after the fact. And what does that look like and how we're able to manage that? Um, because we want individuals to come into our organization and be excited about it. We want them to see as a goal because we're hiring more and more individuals that are challenged to have an organization that's going to work with them on education. That also being said, when we look at workforce enablement, like I had said, there's different components that are new um, or that are enhanced that we need to take a look at so we can be successful. Um, and again, what worked maybe you know, this past year, and it's okay that people are taking a step back because there are so many tools that are out there now. There are so many different ways that you can prove, you know, that you have a return on investment. You know, people are looking at their current contracts with their vendors. You know, I always say when we talk about technology, which we'll get to in just a little bit, um, take the time, learn what you are able to do, and you could probably streamline your ecosystem very efficiently. It's no longer that large gigantic ecosystem where you have to have multiple parts to do so many different things. Now we are able to combine that. We're able to really focus on the learners and we are able to match some of those goals. So how do we how do we go ahead and do that? So let's dive down a little bit more into the learning and performance ecosystem. This uh, slide is a repurposed slide and it's one that's been out in the market for quite a long time. But the nuances here are what's changed or what's evolving and understanding from a learner perspective. So when we talk about developing your ecosystem, you know, look at your learner first. Okay, understand that we have goals, we have business goals, but strategically, you know, the one of the first things of, of experiential design is know your audience, right? Well, as we're changing and as we're hiring new people in, and as we're trying to figure out how to reskill them um, and also upskill them for new opportunities, and we're looking at you know, maybe we're combining roles because of what the business model looks like. So what are those different nuances that come into play that we really need to focus on? Well, collaboration, definitely engagement, social learning. And we've, you know, definitely tipped the scales when it comes to social learning, but what does that mean from a strategy? 
a lot of organizations have you know either embraced social learning or have pushed it off um, saying it's not part of our policy but how does that provide a knowledge environment or a knowledge ecosystem for a learner when they have at their fingertips the ability to you know uh, look at videos to engage in interactive videos which they may not have been able to do that before they have access to more external sites that impact what they do so it's that challenge to figure out what is going to meet the requirements but at the same time we talk about the new blend of learning right so the new blend of learning has been redefined year after year and you know understanding what is truly a blend these days now that we understand with that remote workforce what aspects do i need from a complete knowledge submersion across the board so my learners can actually understand that and how do i translate that successfully to a learning plan or a learning blueprint so when we take a step back and understand that you know we've gone virtual our remote workforce is the largest it's ever been and we'll continue to do do so as organizations adopt that and start taking that as a rule of thumb as they move forward so what are those different components and the nice thing about you know our onboarding and our engagement is that we can get instant feedback and we have ai associated with that as well whether it's an ai chatbot or different kind of virtual um, mentorship or different kinds of aspects when it comes to that mentoring or it comes to that coaching so we do take a step back and say we can make that happen and we can in involve that so looking at that learner experience globally and what works with your your strategy you know is important but it's very reasonable when you take a step back and say okay step one if i understand this i understand that my competencies need to be updated or i understand that moving forward that you know we may or may not be able to support different types of technology based upon integration based upon you know maybe financial it may be timing so there's a lot of different things there so next part of this is i really want to dive down just a little bit into technology um, and let you know that this is a simplified version because my learning technology ecosystem that I use with my clients is, is quite large, but we break it down in different components. So again, this goes hand in hand with the next steps in our ecosystem. So we have not only a learning ecosystem, a learner ecosystem, um, the learning technology system itself, but what does that really mean? And how can I adapt what we're currently doing to move forward? And every organization is in a different you know, part of that. Um, plan as they go forward it may be something very basic where you're starting off with and you know moving through the typical lms procedure i just got off a phone call a couple of days ago with a client that's on their 12th literally their 12th lms which to me is is standard um there's so many different stories that i can share with you but understanding is that viable for them is it answering you know the question of functionality for them because functionality is important content obviously end to end, but from an administrator perspective, from a support perspective, what does that look like for them? You know, is it better for them to do an experiential platform? How does that go hand in hand? And again, to understand your users, to understand where you're going from and what that strategy could look like, it's so vitally important. And when you hear your business requirements, I've sat down in meetings with every vertical you can possibly think of, and I'll give you a prime example here. So we'll just take it as the airline industry, one of the largest providers. Uh, sat down with them, actually, you know, developed a lot of training for them across the board. Post last year, sat down again with them and said, okay, here we are, current state. What are we going to do different than we have done before? And said, you know, to them, where are you as far as mixed media? How are you able to adapt that? Um, they have you know, uh, an experiential platform in place right now. They just moved to that. They're finding it very beneficial for their clients. They have over 40,000 users on it um, and working very well. So they're submerged in adaptive learning. And, but when we got to speaking about AI a little bit, um, that path kind of slowed down a little bit. And the reason for that was because they were unsure how they could move past where they were. They thought they were at their limits for their ecosystem. And in fact, sitting back and talking about some of those collaborative tools that they didn't have in place actually upskilled um, some of their leaders and put into a place a program that turned around over 47% ROI within their first six months, which is basically unheard of, just by utilizing some basic steps to support you know, their learners to that process. So take a step back, really see what's going to work for you. Um, we have a lot of options in the market. I think, you know, 
taking steps where you are. Again, I was speaking with a client uh, about uh, three weeks ago by now and talking about manufacturing where they did not have an LMS in place at all, which is fine, but they were using social media in a lot of different ways. So their path was very different and how they needed to understand they needed social collaboration on the floor of what they're doing. They needed to be able to communicate out with all of their, their users or their employees from end to end. And they also have a very large you know, contract base that they utilize as well. So they take a different um, approach to it. Career pathing for them was very key. Um, now that they're starting to roll out a little bit more of what does that look like for them for an experiential uh, step forward in the right direction, it's very important for them because it's all about enablement. And so different aspects, wherever you may be, post the session, we'll be having um, a little bit more in-depth conversations in regards to multiple tools that, that are out there in the market, showing different cases of what that ecosystem could be. So please do reach out for additional information uh, on the poll. I'd like to share some you know, more details to drill down. Today, again, is that high-level strategy discussion, um, how this all works for you and how you move forward from a one to two-year plan um, and making sure that, that that works for you successfully. And I always believe that, you know, just because you have that plan, you always have plan B, right? What, what we can actually do in the time period that we need. Um, and when uh, organizations come to me, either they want to take a bigger bite than what's actually available to them or what they can handle, we take a step back. And I always recommend going in a very phased approach so it is doable, so you can see results. Um, and again, because of that, we're able to see just a little bit more in regards to the support around what they're trying to do. I just want to drill down um, for a few minutes and just talk about that push for deeper analytics. Um, we're looking at it from a market right now from a very large perspective. Um, what does that mean? So I'm going to just talk for just a few minutes. I don't want to inundate everybody with this, but here, here comes some topics that, that are really important. So how are you utilizing currently within your organization? How are you pulling out in-depth data? I've heard everything from, you know, we really can't get our hands on the data that we need. Uh, we don't have the right technology to pull that data forward for us. Therefore, we're not able to take a look at, you know, what those requirements are and put a solution against being able to pull that data out. And one of the biggest pushes in 2021 that I've seen with all these different clients that I'm working with, and I call them strategic partners, is that push for deeper data. So as you're going through, take a step back and look at what you really need to uh, gather that data and what are those tool sets. But most importantly is how you're going to take that data from a perspective, from an ecosystem perspective and embed that within your strategy. So if you're looking at not understanding or being able to report, if you're a CLO if reporting into your C-level or you're a manager trying to do this, one of the big, biggest things is understanding and connecting those dots for that data extraction. What tools are you currently using? And are you able to mine that data successfully? Because that will be the key moving forward to your strategy. Once you understand where your organization has been, where you are current state and where you need to go, then you're able to pull that data in and support that plan. And it may be drastically different when you're pulling that data out than you quite imagined prior. And it's also about validation. But if you're able to report that up and, and blend that with your approach for trying to obtain your different uh, goals that you need to, especially from a business perspective, that's going to help you tremendously. So depending if you're currently using uh, a learning record store or if you're just you know, part of that whole entire experiential API um, aspect for what you're doing for pulling your data, depending on how you're doing that, it's very important. But take a look at that. And if you have questions in regards to that, there are so many different vendors that are on the market right now that are amazing at doing this um, and can do this in a very proactive way for you. And it's very obtainable. So take a step back, look at that. I keep saying that, but it's important because a lot of organizations rush forward with a decision, not understanding where they need to go. So analyze this, make sure that you're taking the time to really dive down more specifically into what your core requirements are. I'm going to give you one other example. So one of my clients that I've worked with for several years, um, we sat down and had a discussion in regards to analytics and how that affected the overall uh, approach to their learning ecosystem. And one thing that we really spent some time is the performance aspect of it and how they were able to look at trending internally for themselves 
they also had clients as well. So whether you're looking at not only an internal perspective, but a client perspective and what you can do to pull your data out to improve your customer service and improve what you're delivering to your customers is very important. You know, if you take a, take a look at the internet or take a look at your different trends, you're seeing that the, the client experience is so important. How you're able to, to remotely work with your clients to ensure that they're, you know, receiving the best kind of, you know, hands-on or making sure that there's what's called the human factor as a part of that. And I would tell you, with this client that I'm working with, um, they are a provider of content across the board, a global organization. And what they've done is they've taken the time to look at their clients, to look at how not only are they providing that content, um, it's because it's their business model, but taking those best practices and utilizing them internally as well. So that's vitally important as you, as you start to look at it. Not only is this an internal approach, but have you spent time looking at what that client experience is and what that client uh, ecosystem can be and where you need to go with that. Um, so I won't mention the client's name, but they are a very um, large organization and they own several uh, content providers. And with them, they were able to look at a networking solution that allowed them to not only uh, find the information that they needed, but expanded that offering to not only you know, uh, their typical learning, but also rolled out gamification, rolled out, you know, simulations, rolled out a lot of different areas that they weren't able to utilize before. And internally, um, I asked them what their stats were, if they were able to pull in some data from their uh, clients as well. And they were seeing over 22% increase with their client uh, feedback in regards to better service, um, providing better solutions for them to educate them on their products and also uh, on their materials as well. So Please heed that, know that there are some really great approaches. And as we go forward, if you're interested in hearing some case studies or learning a little bit more about a lot of these different organizations, please reach out. I love to share best practices because it's not only what works, but it's also what doesn't work. And if that can prevent you, know, you going down a road, figuring out, hey, we're trying this something new, you know, learn from other individuals. And if you have a takeaway from here, it's to provide you, you know, that roadmap, which has worked well, what organizations have done this in a time period that they want to do it too. So if you come back and say, you know, I'm looking to implement these different changes in my ecosystem, but I'm looking to do that in an eight month uh, period, what's realistic and what's not. So please reach out. We're happy to share this information with you um, because it's only going to increase how well you're going to do and even sharing it with your clients as well. Okay. So let's dive down a little bit to workforce enablement. So some of the areas here with workforce enablement are really pushing some of the boundaries in what we're doing in our industry, especially when it comes to looking at the ecosystem. So workforce enablement, you know, we hear tremendously about, you know, what's happening to our workforce, how we're working with them remotely, you know, what does that technology look like from a virtual learning perspective? How well can we move that forward? And some of those big trends right now that we're seeing, or even business cases that's pushing that, is to increase the performance output, but also to do it well. And as I mentioned before, having that knowledge network around those employees so they feel supported. And that goes hand in hand with a lot of different uh, avenues. And I'll talk about role definement in a little bit. But you know, looking at a strategy where a lot of our learning leaders, their roles have changed drastically over the last year or so. You know, not only has it been, we wear so many different hats, right, in an organization, you know, we're leading change management across the board. Um, we're the face, you know, where I've talked to several CLOs that are doing marketing across the board, which, you know, wasn't part of their skill set, but they're learning to do that. You know, they're working with this, you know, the C-level across the board on making sure that business goals are met, uh, looking for innovative ways to, to be able to achieve those. So um, talking to uh, one of the owners of uh, the airline industry, a uh, very in-depth conversation in regards to how to measure and how to roll out um, workforce enablement in an ecosystem. The biggest question came back to me. He's like, Kelly, this, this is great what, what you're talking about, but how, how do we show that this is successful? When I sit down with my bottom line and I have, you know, my budget's coming to me and I'm approving this and I'm, I'm trying to drive our business forward with, you know, innovation keeps coming up, but what does that look like? All I kept hearing was bottom line, bottom line, and that's great. 
So you need to take a step back and I highly recommend to take a look on that, what I've called before return on performance. How do you map that return on a performance when you have to configure your learning ecosystem, right? So with this workforce and enablement, the challenges that we're seeing, right, um, is total engagement. Uh, something as simple as rolling out interactive videos, something as simple as, you know, cutting down simulations, you know, micro learning has, has had a rebirth again. Um, having those just in time tasks that are important for learners as they go forward. But if I'm sitting in a role and all of a sudden I find out that, you know, if I, if I want to stay within my organization, what else can I do to enhance what I'm doing? So there's the push and the pull of the roles that are going on and those upskilling um, and new skilling. So we hear so much about that. And new skilling is that ongoing continuous learning. And that's such a part of what we talk about with workforce engagement. And just some some points I just want to drill down a little bit more and then I'll get into this and to the skilling and then also the role is, you know, we talk about workforce enablement and you hear people saying it's it's the new phase. Well, it's not the news phase. It's It's been the base of our ecosystem forever. We're just adding nuances to it. We're looking maybe looking at it a little differently because the demand in the industry and the demand of the different verticals that we work with. And we think about how does that impact our learners as we go forward that that workforce itself and how do we surround them successfully to ensure that they're set up for success because if we're not able to do that from a complete ecosystem we're not going to be that successful um, depending on where you're going in it and results can be seen across the board if we if you do this successfully and and really look at it not only from you know uh, looking at the culture changing uh, to the ability to adapt to change very very important but also you know, looking at employee satisfaction. So I had a meeting um, with uh, my corporate, the owner of our company in regards to how well we're moving forward from, you know, employee engagement. And it was pleasantly surprised to hear as we go forward and we're looking at that, you know, I, I, I'll go to organizations and I'll sit down with the, learner, the leaders and say to them, okay, show me the results of your survey, show me the results of what, what you're hearing back. Where, where's the root of your problem? Where's that point of impact? And it always comes down to that basic challenge of, you know, we're gonna reskill them, we're gonna upskill them, but at the same time, our competencies and our whole model isn't quite in place. Um, so looking at what that, that needs to be to move forward so you can be successful is key. And again, it's not only, you know, different aspects that are affecting, you know, the business, but it's also the, the challenge with the economy and also the challenge with the technology as well, too. You know, I had mentioned virtual onboarding before, and it's important because a lot of organizations are doing this very well um, and being able to bring to light those different nuances when it comes to, you know, what do I need? How successful can I be? You know, what what does that experience look like as we move forward? And a lot of organizations are being challenged to 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 adopt new um, approaches and also stay current. That's vitally important because I've been doing this for so long. Staying current is, is important for obviously my career growth, but it's also important with everybody that I speak. Being able to show what's happening next, it is challenging. Um, working with so many different talented individuals across the board and, you know, interacting with the folks that, you know, are, you know, part of these conferences is very important because it brings a different perspective and also what those challenges are and how we can adapt to those challenges once we understand that there are solutions and those solutions can range anything from specifically you know looking at um, the path that we go forward from uh, re-educating ourselves when it comes to solutions that you know will help us you know with that workforce and you know i talk a lot if you hear me at different conferences but you know when we do webinars and, and uh, client events is that with immersive, immersive learning um, and, and providing the new experiences and submerging you know, our learners in that, you know, it is very helpful to have hands-on experience. Um, where companies that are, you know, have been using simulations for years, now starting to adapt that and, and getting feedback across the board and providing those different layers as we move forward into technology solutions. And it all wraps up into being able to provide you know this path step by step as we go through this and it is daunting and sometimes to think about how to make those decisions and when to make those decisions so again you know i would highly recommend just hearing from different organizations um 
following up post this so you can, you know, where you currently are in your, your learning ecosystem. It may be, you know, we're in the point right now when we're really focusing on, you know, instructional design, you know, we're really focusing on how to be, you know, creative when it comes to adult learning and how that's changing. You know, we're really, you know, we took a step back maybe with mobile learning over the last year or so, and now we're going full force into mobile learning because it's part of our requirements and getting that information where we need to go. Um, it may be something, you know, where it's, like I mentioned, a deeper dive into analytics, but really, where does your organization need to go? Where is it going? Um, and learning from where it's been, it, it's, it's important. It may be a little cliche, but it, it's the evolution. And we'll talk a little bit more about that evolution, but I want to drill down for a few minutes on the talent ecosystem. So as we talk about reskilling, um, how often is that occurring? And there are stats across the industry. And I will tell you from my personal experience and working with so many organizations that that reskilling constantly is ongoing. You know, we as learners, sometimes we forget that we are learners and, you know, we don't take off that leadership cap too often, but to take a step back and say, what's my experience as a learner? You know, what skills do I need? So you have proactive people that are constantly looking at reskilling. What do I need to stay, you know, uh, current with my position? It might be, you know, as simple as, you know, we, we're bringing on a new product. I'm not too sure, you know, what skills I may need. Work with your, your trainers, work with the leaders, and the leaders, you know, figure out what that's going to be successful to you. And as you're looking at that as well, it's going to improve retention. We look at retention rates this past, you know, year and a half, I'll even say two years, and it, it's been the lowest rates that we've seen in such a long period of time. But if we take a look at what does that mean? How can we become adaptable and flexible? And you'll probably hear this throughout the whole entire conference, but, you know, our landscape it, this year and next year will continue to be, you know, about flexibility and adaptability. It's so important that we're looking at that. Um, and constantly, what does that look like from a diversity and inclusion perspective? You know, what are we doing to enable our learners to be successful? And how are we building that into our strategy? And new skilling, you know, new skilling has been a part of what we do since day one, regardless of what role you have, that continuous learning is very important. But when it comes to that continuous learning, what actually are those different aspects? Um, are we providing the skills that are necessary? Are we really looking at that talent ecosystem to build out individuals that we have and bringing in the new talent? And how do we keep um, our talent in place? It was very interesting. And I'll share one quick uh, tidbit with you. I had a conversation with one of the presidents of uh, uh, organizations that I work with, this one particular one, I should say. And he said to me, point blank, I believe in our talent. I will do whatever it takes to ensure that we have the skills in place and I stand behind that. And I hear that often, but this is the first time that I believe somebody really stepping forward in, as a president to say, this is what we need to do. And it's important that we build our skills um, because as we as we move forward, you know, we'll see how well our skills and how well we're building individuals and how that relates back to it. And that comes back to that return on performance when we see what results from, you know, courses that are being taken or activities that are being done, you know, the virtual mentor, what feedback we're getting, um, what feedback we're actually hearing live. Uh, how often we're, we're taking that feedback and how we're building that back into our whole entire structure. So I think that's vitally important. So let's talk for a few seconds um, in regards to new roles. So with a new role, why do we have these new roles happening? I will tell you that over the course of, you know, last two years of our, I, I've seen so many different, we use the expression, we wear many different hats. Why do we have to do that? I will tell you that, you know, obviously from a whole entire workforce perspective, we've had to blend this. We had to come up with ways to be able to accomplish different tasks that we're having, things that have been, you know, put in front of us that we have to move forward on that now. Also, with the workforce reduction, I sat down with an organization in the medical field and they said, look at, we've lost so many different individuals as it comes to, you know, our healthcare you know, with the medical requirements that are that are being put out from our, you know, our particular core trainers that we have in place, how are we able 
to redefine those roles when we're learn, losing so many different individuals. And the whole entire concept behind you know, the upskilling is to keep people in place. But if you have a remote workforce, if you're challenged with people that, you know, you're really, what does that look like for a virtual perspective? How creative can we be as leaders to enhance that workforce? What can we do to not only put a strategy in place, but make sure that strategy is successful? And so here, here's a couple ideas that, you know, to take back with you. And again, post this, we'll, we'll provide some more information in regards to, you know, what's worked well. But I saw uh, firsthand with a, a healthcare company um, losing so many of their nurses, um, so many of their frontline workers for numerous reasons, fatigue, um, couldn't get information to them quick enough about what's going on. I take this very seriously. I worked with my healthcare companies for over 15 years and, and then very much support what they do and how they're doing that. Um, we put together some strategies in place to help that, not only from you know even a baseline um, mobile uh, learning program that gives you at the moment details that you need to move forward. Um, you know, it used to be those years where you know within hospitals and stuff where you'd have a, a laptop here and there being able to get training, but you know really providing that just in time. So not only from a device perspective, but also from a communication you know perspective as well. Utilizing social media was very impactful. Um, working on those different engagement models across the board and best practices where we were able to use, you know, the virtual mentor, but we actually did virtual coaches or we call them e coaches to be able to be hands on and having people available for them to move forward and included a lot of those different aspects within their learning strategy, which helped them to move forward. And they're actually revisiting their strategy monthly um, just out of a necessity and it's working for them much better than they had in the past because they're looking at you know those micro areas um being able to to you know cut down to a two minute quick video here and there a one minute video here that can give them the knowledge they need very quickly so there's different techniques like that um, that we can definitely share that we've had in place in regards to that as well um, also thinking about mergers this year, we in our industry, we're seeing quite a lot of mergers and acquisitions happening, and we'll continue to see that as we move forward with it. Um, I think it's important that we understand how does that affect um, our different areas. So I will tell you, working with um, a major provider of pharmaceuticals went through four different mergers within their first uh, Q1 of this year. Um, and how did they do that? Uh, well, I thought for sure that you know, their CLO would, would definitely wind up uh, either retiring very quickly or taking on another role, but he managed to actually be very successful because what he did is he was able to manage the roadmaps as they move across and went through this whole entire blended role approach and took into account long-term. So uh, where a lot of us are struggling for short-term goals, this particular situation, they were able to do it from a little bit of long term understanding what that could affect, but however, but measuring that on short term. So there's so many different things that that go into that perspective, especially as we're looking at, you know, those business lines and products being added. And how does that get added into, you know, being able to provide, you know, skill base across the board for everyone um, as we move forward on that, too. So um, I will actually I see that we have uh, a bunch of different chats that are coming up. Um, and I will pull up them and hopefully be able to talk a little bit more in regards to some of them as well. Um, also, one other aspect too, and one area that I wanted to raise as, as part of this, and I said there's a couple questions regarding it, but how does gamification play into a lot of these different aspects? How does gamification or even simulations that I mentioned before, you know, impact that whole entire learner journey, learning journey? Um, and one of those areas that we're talking about, I'll just give you a quick example, is onboarding. Uh, Thursday, there's a session uh, that I'll be conducting a real quick demo. It's called Vibe, which is uh, KGL's way of uh, introducing different kinds of uh, blend of learning for onboarding. And one of those aspects is gamification. Now, one of the challenges that we've had when we plan these out um, when it comes to an ecosystem is gaming tends to be large. Uh, rolling it down to something that's quick. How quickly can I get, you know, what I need for a learner through like a, a three minute, a five minute, you know, with that as well. And, and that blends uh, with different aspects with an employee where 
a lot of organizations are doing, you know, chunk game learning or, or small gamified components where they're blending that into what they're doing. Um, I've actually seen a lot of this and, you know, working with roles as well. So not only does it become uh, a step back, but it actually can kind of become a little engaging for you when you're thinking about your strategy, being able to do different pieces of this to bring this into your new virtual world so you can ensure that success. Um, so if you're able to join us on Thursday, I'd be more than happy to show you. If you're not, let me know. We can definitely uh, set up some time to walk you through that. It's pretty exciting to see what we can do with some of this new technology as well. So just to talk a little bit more about what I call the evolving or the modern you know, learning ecosystem across the board. This is a little bit stripped down version, uh, but it might be a little bit overwhelming, but the most important things to think about is it is evolving. Um, we are evolving. We are evolving as leaders. We're evolving as learners. Uh, what we look at is vitally important as we go across the board. What does that mean to us? What does that mean to you as a takeaway? Um, how do you digest you know, all the different nuances that, that you are excited about? Or maybe it might be to a point where, quite honestly, it's overwhelming. How do you digest that? How do you take that away to understand that? You know, an ecosystem is just an ecosystem. It's the housing around what you do. Um, and we in the industry have named them so many different things, you know, from, you know, the technology side of it, it's just a way to break down the whole entire enterprise. And it doesn't need to be so large that you can't handle it. The most important parts is to boil that down to specifically understanding where your organization is going. So, you know, transformation across the board, whether you're a global organization or whether you're, you're a local organization, uh, maybe you're in, in national, but you have multi-states across the board that you're looking at that have specific requirements, you know, taking in consideration transformation will never go away. It's something that we live and deal with every single day. But how does that apply to you? Well, you know, we've done definitely submerged in digitalization. Um, the way that we do that has changed. The way that we will continue to do that will evolve with the tools that we're using. Um, it will never be the state of our industry Well, it will be 100% uh, virtual. And a lot of people will have these arguments, you know, we've been talking about this forever. And, and if you speak with folks that, that, you know, say, what about the human factor? I'm planning my strategy. I'm planning, you know, my long-term uh, landscape for my learning. And you know what? I hear everybody talking about the virtual aspect. Where does the human factor come into it? How do we make sure that that's there? Because in a remote world and, and speaking with everybody, it's more than just, you know, having that virtual chat. It's everything that we touch and everything that we do, especially when we do design thinking and when we start to create it for this, how do you make sure that that human factor is touching everything that we're doing? Um, and you know, you'll hear those conversations as we go through about empathy and about how do we design this and how do, what's that impact? And oh, by the way, how does an, you know, artificial intelligence play into these conversations when we're talking about the human factor? So if you look at this from end to end, and, and again, this is a holistic conversation and drilling down into those different aspects of it um, and breaking it down into areas within the ecosystem that can be managed long term. So if my goals across the board, you know, are to increase, you know, my interactivity by 50 percent, well, how am I going to make that happen? How am I going to encompass that engagement, not only from, you know, my remote learners, but as we start to open up our offices and a lot of offices are open now. And we'll continue to do that state by state. How does that work? And how do we bring that back into the forefront of what we're doing? How do we ensure that that digitalization, you know, is going hand in hand with our platform, but not only that virtual strategy. So when you're thinking about your virtual strategy and you're looking at it from, okay, moving forward from today, we've been able to put into place a lot of different areas. I would highly recommend not only doing this by yourself, but when I you know, go in and speak with an organization. And uh, first thing I'll say is, what do you have currently in state? Utilize the technology that you have before you go out and look for external technology. And being a vendor, that, that might be counterproductive, but, you know, you are our clients. You are the people out there making the difference. You are the people that are changing the face of learning and development. So whether you're talking to your clients or you're looking internally yourself, really take a look at what you have before you re-architect everything because it will become a little bit overwhelming. Take a look at where your core focus is or where your strengths are 
within the organization? Is it, do you have strong technology? Do you have areas that are moving forward? Um, so at that particular point, I just want to, to you know, take a step back. I, I see what they're end of time right now um, and give it a second for you to digest this. It might be just a little bit overwhelming, but at the same time, you know, understanding that the takeaways from this it is important that you know you're able to leverage partnerships you're able to leverage you know different types of learning platforms that are out there but also realizing that that performance is important so i will again say to you if you're, you want to continue these conversations follow up i'll provide you information you know i'll provide you you know the uh the success what does return on performance actually look like across the board and i know there were a couple of questions on that um but just to answer some of those so I will just pause for a second. And Jenny, I know that we're quite at the end of our time here, but we do have a few minutes uh, to answer some of the questions, hopefully. Sure, sure. Excellent, I appreciate that very much. So as part of this here, and I'm looking at this, and thank you for the feedback. Um, I'm quite happy. I appreciate the thanks to, to what we're looking at. Um, let me see here. So let's answer a couple of these different areas. So one of the... Uh, forward thinking questions that we have here, I'll address. When we talk about, you know, the skills aspect of it, okay, the skills component of it, you know, how do we actually implement that successfully? And I have actually my personal email here in my chat that's going off as well too. So I know that there's a lot of questions coming in, but let's, let's drill down on that. So basically, how do we, how to implement this successfully from a skills perspective. So if you're looking at, and I mentioned competencies before, you know, I've gone in with organizations and I'll say to them, do you have job, you know, descriptions? Do you have competencies and models in place? You know, how far along are you? And, and they'll basically say, oh, we've got probably about 800 different, you know, job titles in place. And I'm like, how many jobs do you have? And they're like 150. So it's, it's interesting to, to hear that as we move forward, but how to build those competencies against them, I would, um, working with another in, in, uh, industry leader um, in far as, uh, I wish I could tell you who that is, but we have a case study on this. And he said to me, we're building out all of our leadership uh, competencies and we're upskilling all of our leaders. And I said, how are you doing that? And, and you know, what's your model in place? And he says, well, we need to really reorganize our learning ecosystem. So some of the things that we're doing is we're just, you know, taking a guess at what those you know, competencies should be. You know, we've purchased competency models in the past, but again, you know, we're just, we're gonna add training. We're gonna throw training at it and hopefully that's gonna develop what we need to develop based upon some basic what we're seeing in the industry. But not doing a top down, bottom up kind of approach to that, um, not being able to really focus on those core areas that they need to, to be successful in those upskilling. Um, the reskilling component of it tends to be just a little bit more hands-on because you really have to focus on, on that development aspect. Um, there are some really great um, apps that are out there that work hand in hand with the whole entire ecosystem, um, and that can help you move forward with some of those different trends. Um, also, you know, with looking at your mixed media and having that AR VR aspect of it, you can blend some of those aspects, you know, those different approaches into how to work with those skill sets and and moving forward on on those core areas, which is very important as you start to increase what you're doing from a strategy from beginning to end. And then also I see here, you know, we had talked about durations of building out your ecosystems. And, you know, I would highly say to you, um, not only looking at your current uh, contracts that you have in place or your current agreements that you have with your vendors, take the time to make sure that they're the right ones for you, that your strategy is in place collectively with them as well. Um, and try not to sign two, three year, uh, contracts at this particular point because you really need to focus on your strategy and where you're going. So please, you know, take that in consideration. I know that um, it is right now a buyer's market. Those of you that are that are listening in and taking a look at your ecosystem, take the time to do your due diligence because right now, you know, you're in, in the driver's seat as far as what's happening in the industry, and you will continue to do that. And I think that's very important as you look at that. Um, and for that aspect, I. I'm very happy for today. I'll follow up with some additional questions that have come up, come across as well uh, in a chat separately from this. But I wanna thank you all so very much for being a part of today. I know we went through quite a lot of information and uh, please enjoy you know, the rest of the conference. It's, it's a phenomenal conference and 
I just want to thank you all for your time today and, you know, enjoy. Jenny, thank yeah, you so thank much. Thank you so much, Kelly. Great presentation and great information shared. I just wanted to remind everyone as well to complete the poll um, if you'd like additional information from Kelly or want to follow up with any questions. So thanks again, Kelly. Great presentation today. Thank you very much.